Hi everyone! Welcome to week 4! Welcome back. I hope you guys have been doing well on your vocabulary tests. And I'm hoping that these are helping you guys. So let's move on very quickly. Again, if you have already seen the introduction, skip on over to the first word. For those who are new, hi! My name is Miss Kimberly. And that's a picture of me when I was in third grade. What are we doing here? The goal of our session is to have students understand each word in our vocabulary workbook and to know some of the phrases from the novel that may be a little bit difficult for us to understand. Therefore, before we start and move on, please go get these two books now. Go, go, go. Today's agenda one, we'll be going over week four vocabulary. Two, the example sentences that we have made. Three, the difficult phrases from the novel. And four, review for you, self-study. What is the goal for week four vocabulary? It is vocabulary acquisition, meaning understanding the words by learning the definition, synonym, and antonym of the word and part of speech. This can significantly, huge, huge, huge help to improve reading comprehension and enhance contextual usage. Meaning, you'll be able to learn the words and then instead of just studying for the vocabulary test and forgetting it, you'll be able to understand and keep it in your vocabulary brain and use it for it later on. Two, why are we looking at example sentences? because this will help with our writing variation to help us make different sentences when we are writing. By looking at a variety of different example sentences with the one word that we're looking at, students can learn how to use the word in different sentence structures and later it'll help you with your essay writing. So let's go on and go to week four in our vocabulary book. So please, Turn to page 22. 22. The first word is shown up on the screen and it says suspiciously. Everyone say suspiciously. Good. The synonym is doubtfully and the antonym is trustfully. Again, with the L-Y ending, it is an adverb. And the definition is in a way that makes you think that something is wrong, suspiciously. So you don't really 100% believe it. You're just like, hmm, is that true? I don't know. Suspiciously. So here in this picture, kind of scary, the cat looked at me suspiciously. Maybe because you took the cat's toy? We don't know what the sentence was trying to say. So instead of looking at that, let's look at my example sentence on the side. At the bottom it says, one, I looked at my friend suspiciously because I thought she stole my eraser. So if you look at someone suspiciously, you don't believe what they're saying. Okay. So here, you think that someone stole, I think that someone stole my eraser. So I'm not going to be smiling like, did you take my eraser? That's kind of odd. So if you were to think that someone took your eraser, you'd be like, hmm, did you take my eraser? And look at them suspiciously. Example sentence two. It says, the teacher suspiciously walked around the class when all the students said their dog ate their homework. Hmm? The teacher may look at you suspiciously, or the whole class suspiciously, if everyone said that. She doesn't really believe it. Ah! I forgot! Everyone, let's repeat the sentence at the very top first. Repeat after me. The cat looked at me suspiciously. The cat looked at me suspiciously. Very good. Okay? I won't forget for number two. Let's go on to the next word, everyone. Please repeat after me and say avoid. I did not hear you. Avoid. Awesome. 
The part of speech is verb, and the definition says to stay away from someone or something. An example sentence is, I try to avoid getting sick by washing my hands often. So this is a very good skill to have, or habit, I should say, to always wash your hands so that you do not get sick. You're staying away from getting sick, is what this sentence is saying. I try to avoid getting sick by washing my hands often. One more time, repeat after me. I try to avoid getting sick by washing my hands often. Good. Example sentence one. It says, for fun, my friends and I like to avoid stepping on the painted white line when crossing the road. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done this before. I still do it sometimes for fun. When you're at a crosswalk, you have the road that is black, and at the crosswalk there are white paints of or white blocks of paint. So when I'm walking, some people just normally walk down. But I like to have fun and avoid, so not step on the white parts, and only step on the asphalt, the black parts. Avoid. Avoiding the white lines. I'm just trying to stay away. Example sentence two. It says, we should avoid eating too much junk food in order to stay healthy. I know, I know. I love chips too. But we should avoid eating too much of it so that we can stay healthy. So avoid, stay away from junk food and instead eat fruits and vegetables. Good. Everyone say avoid. Number three. Ah, panic. Everyone say panic. With your hands up. Panic. <laughs> the antonym is calm. Calm. And the part of speech is a verb. And it means to suddenly feel so worried or frightened that you cannot think or behave calmly or reasonably. Ah, panic. The example sentence says, we panicked when we saw a mouse in our kitchen. Mm. If I saw just a little bug, I would probably panic. I would feel worried. I would feel frightened. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. What should we do? I can't think straight. Ah, Panic. Repeat after me. Everyone say, we panicked when we saw a mouse in our kitchen. Good. I hope you guys don't see a mouse in your kitchen, but if you do, please try not to panic and stay calm. Example sentence one. It says, the cat panicked and hid under the bed when there was a loud noise. Like I told you before, my cat Tuna, uh, she gets scared a lot. She panics and she runs away and she hides under the bed. She's panicking. She doesn't know what to do. She can't think straight or behave calmly. And she's just panicking. Example sentence two. Some students were panicking when the fire alarm went off. I don't know about you, but at your school or maybe at your academies or some other buildings, you or even at your house, they may have done a fire drill where the fire alarm goes off. And then... Um, sometimes students will panic and they'll run around, they're like, teacher, I don't know what to do. Ah, teacher, there's a fire, we have to go. But instead of panicking at those times, we should stay calm. Everyone say panic. Panic. Number four. It's a long word. Are you ready? Exasperated. Exasperated. The synonym is bothered and the antonym is satisfied. The part of speech says adjective and the definition is annoyed, especially because you can do nothing to solve a problem. So you're very annoyed. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Mm. You're very annoyed. 
The example sentence says, Our neighbor's dog looked exasperated when it couldn't find the bone. So imagine a dog digging and digging and digging, looking for a bone, and he looks exasperated, meaning he's very annoyed. He's like, uh, uh, trying to look for it. It's hard to imagine what a dog would look like if they're exasperated. So let's look at the example sentences after we repeat after me. Our neighbor's dog looked exasperated when it couldn't find the bone. Good. Here, example sentence one says, he had an exasperated expression because his sister kept asking him questions. Expression, meaning his face and what he looked like. He had an exasperated expression. He, looked, he had an annoyed face because his sister kept asking him questions. There are some times when I like to ask the question, why? I'm like, why? And they're like, why? Why? And I ask, why, 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 why over again. Have you done that before? If you have, the person that you're asking why may have an exasperated expression because they're like, Ugh, why does this person keep uh, asking me why? I'm so annoyed. I have an exasperated expression. Example sentence two says, He looked exasperated after working for 15 hours straight. Hmm. I hope I never have to work 15 hours straight at work. But here, this can also mean that you look either tired and annoyed. Maybe he had to stay at work for that long and he couldn't do anything about it until he finished his work. So he was very exasperated. Everyone say again, exasperated. Good job. Number five, pathetic. Pathetic. And the synonym is pitiful. The part of speech is adjective, and the definition says causing feelings of sadness or sympathy. Look at this picture here. The girls. <laughs> pathetic. The example sentence said she shook her head when she heard a pathetic joke. It's not really a nice thing to say, but a pathetic joke may be something that someone said a joke and it just mm, wasn't that funny. It was a pathetic joke. It caused some feelings of sadness or sympathy. They're like, ugh, I didn't like that joke. Let's move on to my example sentences here. Again, after we repeat, don't forget. She shook her head when she heard a pathetic joke. Example sentence one. It says, the stray kittens looked pathetic outside in the rain, so we took them to the nearest animal shelter. An animal shelter is where they take uh, stray animals so that they can have a shelter, a home. So if the stray kittens, the kittens that lived on the streets, looked pathetic, outside in the rain, it means that it was causing some feelings of sadness or sympathy. You're like, oh, they look so sad. Let's take them. Let's rescue them and take them to the animal shelter. Okay, pathetic. Example sentence two says, the old playground equipment were in a pathetic state. So the principal decided to purchase better ones. Meaning, say that I had like a ball and it was all out of air. Or maybe I have um, a glove and a bat to play baseball, but the bat's broken and the glove is all ripped up. These equipment are in a pathetic state, meaning it looks old, it's kind of causing some sadness, because no one wants a ball that can't bounce. So the principal here decided to buy new ones. Good. So hopefully, if the first example sentence at the very top in your book did not help or under, help you understand, hopefully these two did. It means causing feelings of sadness or sympathy. Pathetic. Number six. Assure. Everyone say, assure. And the synonym is ensure. 
Ooh, another way to help you remember the synonym. They both end in sure. And then later on, I'll tell you another thing. The antonym is discourage. And the part of speech is verb to make sure, certain, or safe. Now let's look at that. Hmm. Our word has the small word sure in it. The synonym also ends in sure. And the definition means to make sure or certain or safe. To guarantee as what the picture says also. The example sentence says, the mechanic assured that the car would be ready by tomorrow. Meaning, say that your car broke down, or not your car, your parents' car. Say that it broke down and there's a problem with it and you take it to the shop to get it better. And the mechanic, the person who's trying to fix your car, assured, they're like, don't worry, I guarantee I can make sure you can pick up your car tomorrow. It'll be ready and all fixed. Assure. Repeat after me. The mechanic assured that the car would be ready by tomorrow. Good. Example sentence one. My mom assured me that there weren't any monsters under my bed. When I was younger, I thought there were some kind of scary monsters living under my bed because I kept hearing noises. So I always had my mom, Mom, please check under my bed. Can you look under there and make sure that there are no monsters there? So she would always be like, oh, Kimberly, it's okay. There's no monsters. I checked. She assured me, made sure and certain, and made sure that my room was safe, that there are no monsters there. Example sentence two. The pilot's announcement assured everyone on the plane that the turbulence would soon pass. So again, turbulence means when the plane is shaking. And then when the plane is shaking sometimes, the pilot comes on like, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone. Yes, we are going through some turbulence. It will pass. Please put on your seatbelt and remain calm. The pilot's announcement on the plane assured and made sure and made everyone feel safe that the turbulence, the bumpiness, would soon pass. Great. Everyone say, assure. Assure. Number seven is retired. Everyone say, retired. The part of speech is adjective. And the definition is having stopped working in regular employment, usually because of old age. Yes, Kimberly, I don't know what this means. There's too many big words inside the definition. Meaning, this person just stopped working because they've gotten older. However, retired doesn't always have to mean because they're old. It can mean maybe they got hurt, maybe they are just not doing that job anymore. It means that they have no more job. They stopped working. The example sentence says, My retired parents love to travel with all the money they saved from working. Mm, I would love that. <laughs> retired. Retired parents, meaning my parents, they stopped working because of their old age. And now they're just traveling with all the money that they have saved when they had worked. Retired. Do you have anyone in your family that's retired? Maybe your grandmother or grandfather? Or maybe they're still working. Maybe your great-grandmother or great-grandfather. Retired. Repeat after me. My retired parents love to travel with all the money they saved from working. Thumbs up. Good. The example sentence number one is... Uh, I think her name is Kim Yona, right? I always say Yuna and people are always like, that's not her name. Yona Kim is a retired Olympic figure skater. So here, is she old? No, but she is a retired, not working, not an Olympic figure skater anymore. So now she does other types of work, but she no longer has a job of an Olympic figure skater.
She is retired. Or example sentence two, it says, the retired firefighter shared stories of his brave rescues. So this firefighter now does not work anymore and maybe just goes to different schools to talk about how he had saved people from fires. Retired. Everyone say retired. And is it, um, uh, should I say this? Should I help you? <laughs> An easy way to also remember this word is within the word retired, we see the word tired. I'm so tired. I don't want to do work. Tired. If someone is retired, maybe they're too tired because of their old age is what this definition says. And they stopped working. So that's a way that you can remember this word as well. Retired. Number eight, everyone say accuse. Accuse. The synonym is blame and the antonym is justify. The part of speech is verb and the definition says to say that someone is responsible for a crime or having done something wrong. <gasps> Look at the picture here. We have a cartoon. They're both pointing at each other. Usually, when someone's accusing you, they're like, no, you're the one who did blah, 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 to accuse. To say that someone is responsible, it is their fault for the crime or doing something wrong. The example sentence says, my older brother accuses me every time something bad happens. I hope you don't have a sibling that accuses you of something that you didn't do before. Accuses. So say that um, say that you, you and your brother were late to come home. And then mom's like, why are you coming home so late? And then my brother would be like, oh, Kimberly, it's Kimberly's fault she walks too slow. Or it's Kimberly's fault she wanted to go to the convenience store. He's accusing me for being late going home saying it's my fault, it was my responsibility. Everyone repeat after me and say, my older brother accuses me every time something bad happens. Always says it's my fault. Example sentence two. My feelings got hurt when my friend accused me of taking her toy. So this sentence here shows you the opposite way. How would you feel if someone accused you? I would get my feelings hurt. I would be sad. I wouldn't feel very good to accuse someone or to be accused. An example sentence two says, the detective had to gather all the evidence before accusing someone of the crime. So the detective, the person who's looking into the crime and trying to figure out who the bad person is, who the culprit is, before accusing someone of them, he needs to gather all of the evidence and proof. Accuse. Before he says, it was you, you're the one who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. <laughs> Everyone say, accuse. You guys, are you still there? Good, because we just made it halfway through the vocabulary. And that means you can pause, go get some water, get a snack, or continue with me. Okay, let's go on to number nine on the next page for page 23. It says relative. Everyone say relative. Good. The part of speech is noun because a noun is a person, place, or thing. And this one is a person. It is a member of your family, a person that is in your family, relative. The example sentence says, I saw old pictures of my relatives in our family album. So this here, relatives can be your aunt, uncle, cousin, grandma, grandpa, your cousin's cousin, your relatives. Okay. 
Repeat after me. I saw old pictures of my relatives in our family album. Album, I hope you would know is already a photo album. A book where you keep all these pictures. Example sentence at the bottom. Number one, it says, All of my relatives from the United States visited my family in Korea. This is actually a true sentence for me this year. My relatives, my aunt, uncle, my other uncle and aunt, and some other people, came to visit me in Korea. My relatives, my family. Example sentence two. My family has a reunion with all of my relatives for Chuseok. I'm sure that you guys do this, do this too for Chuseok or Lunar New Year. You have people coming all over. Maybe your cousin from Daegu or your grandma from, um, I don't know, Yasu. They all come together and they meet together and have a great meal for Chuseok. Your relatives, your family members. Good. Everyone say relative. Good. Ten. The word is block. No, no, no. I don't mean like a block, like a little block that you play with. Here is a different type of word for block. The part of speech is noun. And the definition says, A square group of buildings or houses with rows on each side. So if you look at this picture here, there's a road that goes down here and another road that goes down here. This area, if the picture was showing, this would be one block. There's a white building here, another brown building here, and some other buildings probably on the back. That is one block. There's probably a street here, here, and also on this side. Like a block is like a square or like a rectangle. So a block in the neighborhood is a group of buildings. The definition says, the blocks in the downtown area are bigger than our neighborhoods. Meaning, say that we have houses all together in our, in our block. However, downtown, over in the city area, they're much bigger. If you can imagine like New York City, the New York City blocks are huge. It takes me a very long time to walk from one street to the other street because there are so many buildings together. Okay? Everyone repeat after me and say, the blocks in the downtown area are bigger than our neighborhoods. Good. Example sentence two. To make this a little bit easier for you, our favorite ice cream shop is two blocks away from the park. Meaning, if there is a block of buildings here, and then another block of buildings here, and then the park. It's two blocks away. Meaning I have to cross the street two times in order to get to the ice cream shop from the park. Okay. Example sentence two says, Tim's dad often takes the dog for a walk around the block after dinner. If you have a pet, I'm sure also your parents or you yourself take out your dog for a walk outside. It can be around the block of your neighborhood or it can be just down the street. This could be hard to imagine um, being in Korea because not many things are in blocks. However, um, if you were to look at a map of New York City later on after this video, I think it would help you a lot better. Okay. I want to say block. Wonderful. Moving on to number 11. Whoop. 11. Everyone say barely. Barely. L-Y. And the synonym is hardly. And the antonym is vastly. Part of speech adverb and the definition says by the smallest amount, barely. Meaning, I got it, but only by a little bit. The example sentence says, my teacher told me to speak up because she could barely 
because she barely heard me. Sorry. Here, if I'm just talking like this for my presentation, you can still hear me, but you could barely hear me. You can only hear me a little bit by the smallest amount. So the teacher here is asking the student to speak up, to become louder. Repeat after me. My teacher told me to speak up because she barely heard me. Good. Example sentence at the bottom. It says, the little girl was so short that she could barely reach the top shelf at the library. So imagine you're at the library and there's shelves and shelves and shelves of books. And imagine being a little, little girl in this sentence. And she's trying to reach up to the very top shelf. But since she got on her tippy toes, she could reach the top, but barely, only by the smallest little bit. Example sentence two says, Jake's little brother was so excited that he could barely sit still in his seat or in his chair. So if someone's really excited, they're like, oh, 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 oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Oh, oh, oh I'm so excited. So Jake's little brother was so excited that he could barely sit still, meaning he's, he's still moving a little bit. He cannot sit still. Barely. Everyone say barely. Twelve. The word is document. Document. And the synonym is form. And in this picture, don't be alarmed, it's not just black scribbles. If you know the definition, it'll help you understand the picture as well. This picture here are just papers on papers and papers and papers and paper papers on top of each other. Hmm, why is that a picture for this word document? Let's look. The par speech is noun and the definition says a paper or set of papers with written or printed information, especially of an official type, meaning it's very important here. It's important paperwork and sets of papers. Okay. The def or the example sentence says, the lawyer had to go through many documents for his case. So a lawyer's job does not just say, ah, oh, this person that I'm representing, he's innocent. Judge, please believe me. The judge is going to say, um, can you please provide some documents to show? So in this sentence here, he had to go through many documents, go through a lot of paperwork for his case, for his uh, trial that he had to take for the judge. Documents, meaning papers important papers for official work. Repeat after me. The lawyer had to go through many documents for his case. Good. And the example sentence one says, we had to fill out a small document when we visited the hospital for the first time. Here in Korea, I don't know if you were paying attention when you went to the doctors with your parents, if it was your first time at that doctor, they have a little document. It says to write down your name, your birthday, your address, your telephone number, and other information that they need to put into their computers. It is a small document. Okay. Or, I'm sure you've also seen this example sentence for number two, is, there was a document posted in the elevator informing the tenants about the trash policy. If you live in an apartment in Korea, they like to put a lot of documents inside of the elevator. This is how they make some announcements. So here it's saying uh, they posted a document in the elevator informing the tenants, which are the people who live in the apartment, about the trash policy. I've seen this in a few apartments before. They have pictures and they're like, please recycle glass here and recycle plastic this way. And they're informing us how to do it. Document. I'm going to say document. Pow, pow, good job. 
Thirteen. The word is symbolic. Everyone say symbolic. Within this word, we see another word that we should know, and it's the word symbol. Symbol. But the adjective form is symbolic, and the definition is representing something else. So if you look in this picture, it's a heart. And the example sentence says, a red heart is symbolic of love. Meaning, a red heart represents love. Would a red heart here represent homework? No, 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 no. It is a symbol, and it means it is symbolic of love. So everyone repeat after me and say, a red heart is symbolic of love. Good. Example sentences that are a bit longer at the bottom. Number one. Did you know that the five rings for the Olympic logo is symbolic for the five continents competing? Who actually knew that? <laughs> I had to learn this, I think. In elementary school, there are five rings, the five circles for the Olympic logo. The sign is symbolic. It's representing the five continents competing. Meaning like one's for America or North America, one's for South America, one's for Asia, and so on and so forth. Good. Well, now you know. And a little bit of an easier Thing that you may know is example sentence two a picture of a cloud on the weather forecast is symbolic for cloudy weather so um, let me see if I can pull up my thing here here we go so here we have different symbols pictures the cloud meaning it's going to be cloudy, the circle of the sun, meaning it's going to be sunny. They are symbolic of what the weather is going to be like. Everyone say symbolic. Good. Fourteen. Everyone paying attention still? Good. The word is predict. Predict. And the synonym is foresee. 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 To see the future. Hmm. The part of speech is verb, and the definition of predict is to say that an event or action will happen in the future. Predict. So you're thinking, you're going to say, hey, this is going to happen. Predict. Here, the weather forecaster predicted that it would rain today. So weather forecaster is a person on the news that tells you what the weather would be like. They say, hello, today's weather will be rainy. So the weather forecaster predicted, they foresaw, they're looking into the future, and they said that it was going to rain. But it's not that they saw the future, it's because they saw the maps. Repeat after me and say, the weather forecaster predicted that it would rain today. Good. The example sentence one, I put it here again, so what? The weather forecaster predicted that it was going to rain, so it's best to take an umbrella with you. The reason why I put the same sentence here is to show you to add more details in your sentence, you can make it a lot better. So here, when you're also writing for your essays and using these types of words, make sure to add a little bit. Who, what, when, where, why, how. This one is asking, so what afterwards? So it's best to take an umbrella with you. Predict, since it's going to rain. Example sentence two says, the scientist predicted that his experiment would be successful. It 
in second grade at MI, you guys have done um, science projects and you were to make a prediction, a hypothesis of what you think or what you thought was going to happen at the end. To predict. To say that an event or action will happen in the future. Everyone say predict. Good, good, good. Let's go on to 15. Dramatic. Everyone say dramatic. The part of speech is adjective and the definition is very sudden or noticeable or full of action and excitement. So dramatic. It's not just like in a soft and calm and quiet manner. It's dramatic. It's sudden and you can see it. It's noticeable. There's a lot of action. Here at the top it says... The movie had dramatic scenes of a tornado destroying a city. So here, maybe the scenes in the movie were showing the gusts of wind, or maybe they were seeing that the house was collapsing. A word from the earlier weeks. So dramatic. It's full of action here for the sentence. Everyone repeat after me and say, the movie had dramatic scenes of a tornado destroying a city. Good job. Example sentence at the bottom, number one, says, there was a dramatic change in her appearance after she cut 20 centimeters of her hair off. If I were to cut 20 centimeters of my hair, my hair would look, I would have to cut it here. I would look like a whole totally different new person if I cut my hair here. Eee. Dramatic. It's a very noticeable. Everyone will recognize and see that there is a big difference. Dramatic. Example sentence two says, Her dramatic facial expressions and delivery during her speech led her to get first place. In third grade, all of you have been doing many speeches and presentations for your textbook class and for TED Talks. So here, if you have dramatic facial expressions, you're showing emotion, right? If you're showing dramatic facial expressions and doing very well in your delivery with your pronunciation and intonation, then you would probably get first place or get a very good score on your speech. Okay? Dramatic. This does not mean when she's doing her speech, she's talking like, hello everyone, today I'll be talking about, that is not dramatic. That is no emotion. That's not how we should be doing speeches at MI. Everyone say dramatic. Good. And our last word for week four. Everyone say consequence. Consequence. One more time, consequence. Good. And the synonym is outcome, and the antonym is cause. The part of speech is noun, and the definition says, a result of a particular action or situation, often one that is bad. So something that happens because of something else, but in a bad and negative way, a consequence. Example sentence at the top. My stomach ache was a consequence of eating too many sweets. So, because I ate so many sweets and candy, I had a consequence, I had a bad after effect of having a stomach ache. Repeat after me. My stomach ache was a consequence of eating too many sweets. Good. Example sentence at the bottom one, it says, Becca learned the consequence of not wearing sunscreen after getting a painful sunburn. When you go outside every day, or if you're going out on the field or to the beach, and you don't wear sunscreen, sunblock lotion, you can get very burnt from the sun. And that is a consequence of not putting on your sunscreen.
the negative thing that happens. Example sentence two says, the consequence of not studying for a test is a low score, which I know all of you will never get because you're watching this video right now. <laughs> Everyone give me a high five. Ha! High five and give me a big stretch. Everyone stretch it out. Wow, we just finished all of our words for week four in our vocabulary workbook. This will help you do the pages after, so make sure to do that after we watch the video. Let's close it up. Put it away and take out our The Kid in the Red Jacket novel. If you don't have it, pause, go, and come back. Or you can pause and stretch some more, or pause and go get some water. Or you can continue and go along with me. We'll be going over some difficult phrases from the novel for cultural fluency for you to understand because maybe it just doesn't make sense because the culture is different from Korea and in America where this book was written. So by becoming familiarized with the different slang, the words, and phrases of the colloquialisms, students will be able to relate to the novel and use these phrases to convey your ideas precisely. And we are at the final few chapters. Good job! By the time you watch this video, you should have finished reading the book. Or maybe you're watching the video before reading the novel, which is fine. But this is for chapters 8 through 10. Woo! Let's everyone go to page 92. You there? 92 is chapter 8. And here, um, Howard is talking to Gaylord, his younger brother, baby brother, who cannot talk or anything. And he is getting ready for Pete and Ollie to come over to his house. But this is what he says to his brother. It says, Also, if they, meaning Pete and Ollie, also, if they happen to see you, just smile and try not to spit up on yourself. They might think it runs in the family or something. So here, first, I would like to review what is spit up on yourself. If you have a baby brother or baby sister or baby cousin, babies spit up a lot. Meaning they have like their uh, spit and they just drool. Or if they're drinking milk or eating food, they will spit it out and spit up on themselves. I mean, they're not, they're not spitting like t -t, like spit, but babies spit up on themselves and they spill it. Here, what does the word or phrase runs in the family mean? Runs in the family means that a certain trait or characteristic is often seen within a family because it has been passed down from parents to their children. So say that your grandmother has curly hair, and then your mom has curly hair, and then you have curly hair, then having curly hair runs in the family, meaning that everyone has it, or it is a trait that people have. So here in this context in the book, Howard is saying that if you accidentally spit up on yourself and someone sees it, they may think that this is something that everybody does in their family. So Howard is afraid that Pete and Ollie will think that if they see Gaylord spitting up on himself, blah, 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 they think they may think that Howard blah, 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 spits up on himself, and so on and so forth. It's just a funny way of saying they may think that I do it too. But the word here, run, a lot of you are probably like, Miss Kimberly, run means to run from that place to another place. Yes. Run also means to run. However, like moving quickly on your feet, but it has a lot of other meanings as well in English. Another example would be to run my own company. To run my own company does not mean I'm running with the company. <laughs> to run a company means that 
You are the person in charge of the company. You make the important decisions. You manage the business. You take care of everything that it needs to be successful. Or it may say, oh, um, can you run the washing machine? That does not mean run with the washing machine here. And it also does not mean that I am in charge of the washing machine. Here, to run the mach washing machine means to operate, to make it work. Okay, Run is a very versatile word. It has many different things depending on the context it is used in. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you're reading this. They might think it runs in the family or something. Try to think about something that runs in your family. Um, what's something that runs in my family? Uh, we are all very tall. My grandfather was tall. My aunt is very tall. I'm pretty tall. Being tall runs in my family. Good. Now let's go to page 99. One, two, three, and we're on page 99 now. This part is when we're, uh, when Howard was thinking to himself, because Molly's at his house trying to, um, um, Molly was at his house and interrupting his t playing time with Pete and Ollie. And... This is when Molly kind of got her feelings hurt. I won't go too much into it because I need you to read the book, but you should understand. On page 99, it says, She got along okay before I came, didn't she? She get over not having me. Little kids, well, they bounce right back. Bounce right back. What does this mean, bounce right back? Here, Bounce back means to recover quickly from something difficult or sad. So here in the story, they're kind of teasing Molly, playing, throwing her ball, if you did not know. So here, just like a rubber ball, bounces back when you drop it. Drop, bounce. It means that little kids can often get back to feeling happy or normal after something upsets them. To bounce back. Howard is saying that children are resilient and strong so they can quickly feel better after facing a problem or feeling sad. So even though that they were being mean to Molly, he believes that she would bounce back and become her happy self again later on. Bounce right back. Um, so say that something happened to you and you're really sad. However, five minutes later, you're able to bounce right back and become your normal self and be happy again. Bounce right back. Page 102. Page 102, paragraph 2. This is after their football game that they had played. But some of you may not even know what football means. What is football? Let's first read the quote. Pete never thanked me for my handoffs. But I was positive he appreciated what I was doing. He scored three touchdowns. Here, they're talking about an American sport that is called football. And a handoff for the first part is when they're passing the ball. They have a ball and they have to pass it to someone who can now run with the ball to reach to the end of the field where they score a goal. To score a goal in football means to have a touchdown. So here, a touchdown is a way to score points in American football. To score a touchdown, a player needs to carry the ball into the area at the end of the field called the end zone. It's like reaching a special area in a game to earn a point. And when a player successfully runs into the end zone with the ball, 
their team gets points. It's kind of like scoring a goal in soccer or making a basket in basketball. A touchdown is a point or scoring for football. Okay, I didn't have any pictures for this week. However, if you want to look up maybe a little video of how they play football on YouTube, that would help you as well. The so handoff is to pass the ball, and a touchdown is to score points. So here, Howard helped by passing Pete the ball, and he was able to run, 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 and score three times, score three touchdowns. Very good. Now let's go to page 104. Are you there? I hope so. Here, it says, um, I couldn't risk waking him up, meaning Gaylord. When you wake up a baby from a nap, mothers go berserk. The last time that happened at our house, mine hit me over the head with a newspaper. To go berserk. The word berserk is an adjective that describes someone or something that is out of control, acting extremely wild frenzied, and sometimes violent, as you can see at this sentence here. It means that this person has lost their normal behavior and they're going crazy or becoming very, very frantic. So why would a mother go berserk if you wake up a baby from a nap? Usually, mothers will not go berserk. They will not go crazy. However, they would be have or they would have an exasperated look on their face. Annoyed look. Because to make a baby go to sleep and take a nap, sometimes it takes the mothers a long time. And if you were to wake up that baby and say, hey, wake up, Gaylord, the moms <clears throat> would be like, oh, I just worked so hard to make your baby brother go to sleep. Why would you wake him up? Going berserk. I also wanted to go over this last sentence here. It says, the last time that happened at our house, mine, meaning his mother, mine, my mother hit me over the head, on the head, with a newspaper. The last time Howard woke up Gaylord is what, is that, is what that is saying. I just wanted to make sure that mine here, that you know, meant his mother. Are you doing well so far? Good. Now let's go all the way to page 123. Are we there? Good. It says on the top, up here, this is a letter that Howard was writing to his friend Thornsbury back before he moved. It says, his name is Pete Jones and he's pretty quiet. So it's taken us a while to get to know each other. My mother says we're finally starting to grow on each other. It makes us sound like fungus. Yuck. Grow on each other. Does this mean that Howard and Pete are growing on each other and they're like, maybe Pete is standing on Howard or Howard is standing on Pete and they're growing to become taller? Hmm, that's not what this context means. So first, we would like to look at this part here. So it's taken us a while to get to know each other. So they haven't become too close of friends because Pete is kind of quiet. But his mother says we're finally starting to grow on each other. To grow on each other. So imagine you have a friend and you spend a lot of time together sharing stories and experiences. Just like how plants and trees grow over time, people can also grow closer to each other by spending time together and getting to know each other. So when Howard's mother says that they're growing on each other, she means that their relationship is getting stronger as they spend more time together. 
So to grow on each other, to become closer, to become better friends. It makes us sound like fungus. Huh? Why does this, when it says growing on each other as becoming better friends, talk about fungus? Do you know what fungus is? Fungus is like a kind of plant that can sometimes grow on other things like trees or rocks. Like the green moldy stuff. In this case, Howard is comparing his growing relationship with Pete to now being fungus. Because he doesn't understand, Howard doesn't understand grow on each other means to become better friends. It's just a playful way to talk about how they're becoming closer and like how fungus can attach and grow on other things. So grow on each other is a metaphorical way of saying that they are becoming to become friends, but Howard is taking it as a literal way, as in grow, something is growing on top of something like fungus does. And I believe this is the last one, everybody, on page 124. You're doing so well. We're almost there. Here, uh, Howard is talk, or writing a letter to Thornsberry and telling him that Molly was eating dinner at his house. So it says, So Molly ate dinner at our house. After we finished, she told my mother she was a better cook than Ronald McDonald. Some of you were like, maybe, who's Ronald McDonald? But some of you may have already caught on. Do you know who Ronald McDonald is? He's the funny guy who is the mascot for the famous fast food restaurant called McDonald's, as you can see from his last name. Um, he looks like a clown, has white uh, paint and red hair, red lips, wears a yellow suit. He is Ronald McDonald. He's known for making hamburgers and other yummy food at McDonald's. So when Molly says that Howard's mom is a better cook, a better chef, better making uh, food than Ronald McDonald, she's saying that the food Howard's mom made was even tastier and more delicious and better than the food that you can get at McDonald's. It's just a really nice way of saying that the food was really, really good in um, Molly's perspective. So to say that, it means, after we finished, she told my mother she was a better cook than Ronald McDonald. Okay? That's a wrap, everyone. We finished all of the vocabulary review. We finished the whole book of the difficult phrases. So now it's your turn again. Step four, after this video, what do you have to do? You have to review and self-study. Review the words again. Read it out loud all the way through. And reread the novel where the phrases that we just reviewed came from so that we could fully understand what that whole chapter was talking about. Okay? Review. Read out loud, reread. Those are the steps that you have to do. I'll let you guys go. You guys did a wonderful job following along today. I hope you guys um, have been getting wonderful scores on your vocabulary test. And I'll see you guys on week five. Okay? Bye!